Jason, your host and producer for Community Culture Showcase. And today we have a wonderful guest who is politician, historian, give us a little, a, little, a, a little slice of life on one of the most important kind of structures here in this part of the state. We're talking about the submarine base and the submarines and all the stuff that EB has done in Groton over the century, because we are celebrating a century of the presence of submarines here in this part of the country. And it is a beautiful and important history. I mean, there are people out there as I speak whose livelihood has or has in the past completely depended on the presence of submarines in this area. And it's a great kind of hill history. It's a kind of military history. We're talking about uh, a presence that fought in many of our most important wars, starting out in like the Spanish-American War from 1898. So I am so pleased to have our discussion about a century of the submarine here with the uh, mayor of the city of Groton. That's right, Harriet. <laughs> Marion Galbraith, <laughs> who has been kind enough to provide us a whole bunch of photographs. That's right. Detailing this incredible 100 years plus. Right, the early days before it was a sub base, and then uh, its early days as a sub base. So, what's the uh, what's the catalyst for having this 100 celebration? Well, you know, last year we celebrated Coast Guard Summer for mm -hmm. 225 years of the Coast Guard, and at that time, we it came to our attention that we were celebrating a big milestone here as well. That um, October. 18th of 1915 was actually when the first submarines came up to be stationed here in Groton, and that's the beginning of uh, 100 amazing years. Um, you know, when you think that almost everything that has to do with submarines in one way or another comes mm -hmm. through this town, right? through this base, every submariner goes to school here, you know, Groton touches the lives of everybody in the submarine force, and that's, that's a pretty amazing a pretty amazing realization. Absolutely. And the fact that it's been around for 100 years. One, yes. One would never think about that. You think about submarines. I don't think we even think, uh, even remember that they fought in World War I. That's correct. Um, and so, you know, kind of think mostly about World War II. So it's a lot older than that. Yep. Yep. Well, you know, we re and it was really World War I, as I understand it, where we really uh, geared up our submarine force. I mean, submarines were around from 1900, but, you know, when the Lusitania was sunk and, and the, you know, the German U-boats uh, were doing so much damage, it really pointed out how significant the submarines were going to be in warfare. Right. And we continue to, th uh, to think that way. Absolutely. And we have uh, the sub base will be here hopefully for many more decades That's to come. That's the way we want it. <laughs> As uh, the military kind of changes its mindset about a lot of things for the Navy, but submarines even have become even more important. Th yes, absolutely. They're a very important part of our, of our warfare and our peacekeeping. Right, right, in terms of just being able to spy on who's after us, and there are many people who are interested in what we're doing, and so, yeah, we definitely need defenses, yep. and we have people out there, uh, Paris is only one example, Oh yeah. of uh, people who are very out, to, out to get sad. us, so, yes, we need to be extremely vigilant, and our submarines make it possible. So let's go back 100 years, and okay. so we got a lot of photos, um, and we're going to start, hopefully, with some of the earliest photos because what we'd like to show is what was there before it was a sub base. So we're yep. talking about some... So I actually am going to take you back to about 1868 and then the few years before then. Okay. Um, and uh, at that time, uh, the Navy was looking at forming a northern, a northeastern Navy yard. Mm -hmm. And there were two opportunities. One was here in New London Harbor and one was in Pennsylvania. And uh, I think I've said before that, that the history of our base is one of, of near misses <laughs> along the way. Um, actually, Pennsylvania was slated to get the Navy Yard, but two people, one who was the head of the um, Connecticut Navy Yard campaign, who was uh, Mr. Bowles, and our congressman or legislator, I should say, Augustus Brandegee, um, were able to put forth a resolution um, that went to Congress in which they would accept a gift of land from Connecticut. And that's how the base mm. ended up being, or it was not a base then, it was a Navy Yard. That's how it ended up being here. Uh, and at first, time it was, at first it was slated to be on both sides of the river. Right. The Navy decided on the east, and Mr. Bowles went to work acquiring farmland. 
Now, is this the same Bowles from the, the famous Bowles family of Connecticut who sent lots of legislators to, you know... Like Probably. I'm, I'm more familiar with the name Chester Bowles. This mm -hmm. is a John Bowles, so, right. um, but I, I don't know their direct relationship. <laughs> But it is a name that's familiar, familiar to us. Here and so is Brandegee here in, in Groton. One of our major streets is Brandegee. Oh, okay. Great. Yeah. So we got the proclamation. We got the land. Got the resolution, yeah. And in 1868, the um, Navy Yard opened. Now, um, if we can, and, and these are some of the earliest construction that you'll see on here. There weren't a lot of buildings at this time. Um, and in fact, the very first commander of the yard uh, didn't live up here. Mm. He had his office in New London. He traveled from New Haven when he needed to be up here. Um, but it was used to house um, the ironclads that had fought in the Civil War, that were oh. used in the Civil War. Okay. And we have a picture of the monitor there's the monitor. Okay. Um, and they were to be decommissioned. They ended up not being decommissioned, but they were, that's really, they were just being uh, stored here. Okay. When they first came. Um, and then they decided that they had still had uh, ship uh, value yep. out on the seas. That's right. So, okay. so they ended up uh, staying here for a while. Um, so we, we move along and we actually end up with another near miss. Mm. Um, in 1898, the station was, the yard was closed. Um, and it was reopened in 1900 as a coaling depot, <laughs> as a coaling station. And they had a coal plant here. Um, Is that a picture of it? This is actually um, a picture of, yes, of those early days, but the building on the right, the white building, is one of the stables <laughs> from the early property. And I, it's very interesting. I was talking to one of our sub-vets who's very active with um, the Groton base, works very hard on the memorial here. Um, and he was telling me that his father, who was stationed here in 1919, oh boy, yes. uh, remembers those stables. And, and I just wanted you to keep that in mind because later I'm going to show you the same picture about, uh, you know, about 15 years later, 19 years later, and how, how things had changed. Right, right. And, and, we, and we have some, yeah, here we go. So this building, again, this is one of those buildings that we're going to see uh, change over time. This is cons called Building 3 at the time, um, and it is a brick building, but they added the porches. They actually, it was actually one story at first. They added the porches, mm. and I'm going to bring you back to this later when it becomes oh. our sub-school. Oh, okay. So now looking a little, little like uh, New Orleans with those, yeah. <laughs> with, those <laughs> with those balconies that across the... Uh, Across, of course, it's not warm enough uh, in uh, in Groton, Connecticut. Okay, these the and and do, you, do we have any idea who took these photographs? I mean, was this part of some kind of um, project that they had? To... I I don't know that. Okay. I I would imagine that uh, there was a lot of documentation of what was happening. These buildings predate that that 1898 closing. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. And we move. Yeah. Here so we go. here's our coaling station. So again, in. Um, in 1900, it was reopened for mm. a coaling station. Um, in fact, the very first coaling pier burned. <laughs> um, they were doing experiments, and uh, from what I understand, the fire didn't go out for several days. Oh, yes. Yeah, coal will burn. Yes, it will. <laughs> um, but this is one of the coaling, and I think our next picture is actually a, a picture of a of the Texas being loaded with coal. Mm. And, and, yeah, uh, the ships there. Yep, are, yep. yep. So it went on being a coaling station um, until about 1912, when most of our the ships that the Navy was using stopped using coal and started to use oil. Oh, okay. Um, so once again, <laughs> uh, the base is about to close. And in 1913, um, they there's a big discussion about closing the base, but in comes Congressman Higgins, who I think we have a picture of, and Congressman Higgins saves the, um, saves the station, and he argues that the cost of closing it would be more than the cost to keep it going. Right. So that brings us to 1913. Right around the corner comes 1915, and that's when our first submarines come up the river to be stationed here. Um, those, those ships came up, as I said, in 1915, and they were the G-class and D-class of submarines. Oh. So here's one of the G-class submarines. It hardly is recognizable, mm. is it, <laughs> as what, what, what we think of. And that tender behind it is the Ozark. Um, 
the the ships were named at G class, D class. Prior to that, there was an A class, <laughs> uh, very early. But this this is a uh, G class submarine, and in our next photo, you'll actually see the uh, the, the the here they're stationed right um, at New London. You can see the coal behind it in the, the right. back left of the picture. Um, this is again with the tender Ozark, um, and then come the D class submarines. And um, uh, uh, this is an even better picture of one of the submarines with, mm -hmm. with the coaling station behind right. it. It hasn't right. been disassembled. You can also see some of those original buildings that you mm -hmm. saw earlier yes, on. Yes, yes, yes. And then I think we have some pictures of the D-class submarines. Yep, these were D-class. And these were used for training mostly mm -hmm. because um, shortly after the base, uh, this, they were stationed here. Shortly after the first submarines came in October 18 of 1915, by June of 1916, the um, New London Submarine Flotilla has come here. It is a submarine base under the care of uh, Commander, excuse me, Rear Admiral Yates Sterling, and the sub base opens. So these were used primarily for training, um, and about this time also comes the USS Fulton. And the USS Fulton um, was one of the tenders that came here. Okay. And that's the USS Fulton ah. in that photo there. Now, some people from around here will remember a much later USS Fulton that was here. Um, gosh, uh, I'm going to say through into the 90s. Oh, very Probably recently. more yep. recently than that. I'm not mm. going to remember a good date. Uh, different Fulton, okay. different USS Fulton, but still a submarine tender. Right. Right. Now, these originally were built somewhere else, and then they simply just yes. came here. Yeah, and in fact, um, you know, we think of uh, Electric Boat as the, the place where submarines were built. There were actually other places where submarines were built, but Bridgeport, interestingly enough, was a, was a very important spot for submarine building. Um, and in fact, before this became the first naval submarine base, there was a submarine station on Long Island. It was oh. it was not the, a naval submarine base, mm -hmm. but it was where some of those A class were actually were. built. Yeah, interesting. Or they, where they were stationed. A oh, station. Um, but Bridgeport was uh, there was a torpedo uh, company there. Ah, okay, interesting, yep. interesting. Yep. And so, and of course, it's evolved where it's become so expensive to build these babies that we don't need 20 different shops. There aren't many places. <laughs> I mean, we're really just looking at Electric bo Boat and uh, Newport News. Right. Um, that's what we're looking at. And, um, and we're very fortunate to be the one of the homes of right. Electric Boat. Um, right. Now, part of the reason that it's here is because it is uh, the channel in terms of coming up from the sound to the river is deep enough. And there's yeah. some good physical reasons why. It was one of the reasons that even as early as 1799, this was mm. looked at as a good place for um, to have a Navy yard. That's why it was one of the two places that was up in for consideration in, in the 1860s. Um, it, there's... A, Throughout the seasons, you can access mm. the ocean from right. here. You can go down the, the mouth of the Thames and into the Sound and, and into the Atlantic. It's, right. uh, it's, it's a good, good and deep, good deep port. Right. Yep. Exactly, exactly. Yep. So we have Mother Nature or whatever is the, designed our coast to make it uh, a valuable asset in that in that sense. That's so, right. Right. And do they? Do you know? Do they dredge these? Um, have they been? The, yeah, oh, they, there's dredging. Yes. Goes, absolutely. To make sure that as, as these submarines get larger and larger and, and, and higher and higher, that the water the water can... And it's, uh, it's one of the benefits for us of having a, a, a naval base here is because is that so much dredging is done that it's also good for the new London port. You know, oh, there's a, we have a port reason. authority there yep. now. And so, you know, the cruise ships that have come up from mm. time to time, um, it's a very symbiotic relationship. Wonderful. Yes, definitely. Definitely. So now we jump in 1915. The world is at war. You know, we're not there, but I'm sure, you know, we know what's going on. Uh, and, and the submarines built in other parts of the world are, are nearby, perhaps, spying on us as well. Well, they had certainly made their presence known, you know, as I said, with the uh, sinking of the Lusitania. Um, and it became very well known and submarines, in, in fact, at one time there was actually, a, a, from what I understand, a worldwide effort to ban submarines mm. because they were so dangerous and, and 
an instrument of terror, it was thought. Mm. Um, but it certainly became clear that submarines were going to be important in warfare. And during that time of World War I, that's when the sub base really builds up. Over that period of time, it goes from five buildings to 80 buildings. Oh, okay. It really is amazing. Jumps, and, jumps. Yep. And in fact, in some of the pictures that we can see here, you can actually see the contrast. This, by the way, is um, Rear Admiral um, Yates Sterling Jr., oh, who wow. was the who was the commander here when the sub base opened. The sub base was established as a base in um, 1916, and also the sub school was opened. Ah, okay. This is, we are the only submarine school, um, so every For submariner. For the United States Navy. Yep. Right. Come, so every uh, submariner comes through Groton. Interesting. So this is the building that I was showing you before that had that you remarked it was looking a little bit like New Orleans. <laughs> yes. So you can see all of that facade coming off, and this becomes our first sub school. This becomes the quarters for this for the first sub school here. So that building three uh, is now being repurposed. I'm not sure who that is walking into the <laughs> building, but I'm sure it's someone important. And uh, remember the stables that I showed you earlier, they're about center in this picture, but you can see now with the other buildings that have been built All along, around them. this is um, Shark Boulevard. Um, you can see the railroad that now goes through mm. the base. I mean, you really can see how much more building there is right. that's going on here. Um, the building on the right, I believe, was, um, was quarters for the submarine school. Um, mm. I think that's the officer's quarters. Okay. Don't hold me to that particularly, right. but I well, think so. Well, it was, World War I was a dramatic change yes. in warfare. Uh, everything from the armaments. I mean, they started out with the muskets and uh, practically with muskets and horses. But by certainly the middle and end of the war, it was a whole different world. It certainly was. Um, some of it pretty ugly with mustard gas yep. and, you know, terrible chemical warfare. But also just the armaments got um, a lot more powerful. And, uh, you know, men stopped uh, standing in line to get shot and killed. But, yes, so definitely the World War I was kind yes. of a turning point for tanks and submarines and all kinds of different kinds of planes that uh, changed the whole nature of, of warfare. Absolutely. And, uh, you know, we were a small part of it. We weren't in the war very long, but we were very important to bringing the war to a conclusion. Mm -hmm. That's absolutely right. And, and, and part of that is having a Navy that was, uh, you know, Top of the line. Yep. Um, as although we could see, my understanding is, and I, I'm not really a, a naval historian by any shot, <laughs> by any stretch of the imagination, but um, you know, this was where we, we we begin to see the importance of the submarines. It was um, and and where and and Rear Admiral um, Yates Sterling was one of the people who who started a commission on the design of the boats, mm. um, but it was really where it opened our eyes to the possibilities of what the submarines could do. We were not at first the leaders in the use of submarines. Right, right. But we got smarter and smarter. Absolutely. Ab and in World War II, we got smarter and Absolutely. smarter too. Absolutely, exactly, exactly. So the Germans in both wars were up there first. Yeah, we had a we had to outsmart them, out Fox. But and, and it just goes again to show how important this base is because mm -hmm. this is where, you know, this is the first submarine base. This is where we first begin to understand um, how important this is and how important it is to train a silent service, right. um, train those submariners who would who would become important and for for the rest of our um, our history up to now. And I guess um, my brother was actually uh, in in the Navy, and actually he was going to be in submarines, but he was he got claustrophobic, and I so I know that part of the training is is the electronics and the engineering, but also the psychology of being in a extremely enclosed kind of place, which was uh, not for him. I mean, landed up being on destroyers. So you know, it, and I know that's part. That has to be part of the training. You know, I, every t I haven't been on submarines that often. Recently, I was, and and we'll talk about that in a little bit. But every time I see the quarters, I'm just amazed, really. And, and you know, to be able to, it's not just the people who are living together in such small quarters. It's that the technology that runs these submarines, the, the what goes into making those submarines work, 
fits so compactly and so um, so efficiently into this space and is able to do so much. It really is a marvel. Yes, it, definitely, definitely. And it isn't, and it isn't for every Navy man. No. <laughs> <laughs> and so I, I think that, you know, now they're going to put women in, uh, yes. in the submarines. Yep. And I'm thinking, oh, my goodness gracious. Yep. That is pretty close quarters uh, in terms of, of, of living. And uh, my understanding is that they're uh, under the water, and in the dark for a, for a long period of time. So, you know, you have to, ha hats off to the men and women who, who serve in these kinds of, um, in submarines, because even if you're great at, the, you know, being a Navy man or woman, this is a whole different environment. And it, it does take mm -hmm. a very special kind, and I know that they root this out because they don't want any trouble um, once they're on assignment. So, yes, this is... This is definitely, uh, my hat's off to these men and women. This is definitely not for anybody. You know, this is a special kind of person who can do this kind of work. So it is, um, it's wonderful yes. that you can find people who can do this. And I'm sure that's part of this training at the school is finding those candidates who really can um, excel in, in a very um, unnatural, thinking about it, unnatural yeah. environment. So uh, yes, definitely, definitely. Yeah. And it's, and again, it's an instrument for the future as well. Um, and I, I guess submarines were always thought of as something different, um, you know, like scientific and maybe even, um, um, not that the quaint, like something very unusual. I mean, uh, special kinds of minds had to come up with designing these kinds of ships. Well, yeah, I mean, I, when, when you think of the, the marvels that are, you know, even, even the, the fact that you can, because of nuclear power that you can circumnavigate the globe underwater. Yes. You know, that's yes. amazing. Staying down for such a long period of time, it really is it really is a technological feat. And most of the earth is water. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> most of the earth is water and it's pretty far from place to place. So yes, it's fascinating. Absolutely yeah. fascinating. So my hands off, hats off to these kinds of uh, men and women who can do this kind of work. So what are the kinds of photographs I, that I we got? I think we have another picture for, of, uh, this is again the, um, the uh, I believe this is the officer's quarters. Uh, you can really see the building up that's happening at this point. And then the, the next picture is kind of an interesting picture because the building that is shown there is a power plant. And that power plant was built in 1918. Mm. And if you go on the sub base, you'll still see that building today. Wow. <laughs> I'm sure it's not doing power. <laughs> I hope anyway. Well, I, th I think it's been refurbished <laughs> oh, many times. Oh, many times <laughs> since. Okay, yes. But it's still there. So right. um, you really see the face of the submarine base. And this mm. this picture, I believe, was taken in 1918, maybe wow. 1919. But you can really see that, you know, the base as we know it really has its foundations through that World War One period. Wow. Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. So then uh, the war is over. And do we have more fit pictures? We don't have more historical right. pictures. I mean, I, I, we own more historical pictures. We don't have them for today. But, but yes. you know, from, from there on, in between the wars, there's more development. As you said, by World War II, it's, the submarine service is so important to our success in World War II, particularly in the Pacific and particularly after what happened with Pearl Harbor. Mm -hmm. um, and in the Cold War, the submarine force again, right. right up front. And now the submarine force is still such an important part of our naval power. Okay, right. interesting. So the reason, uh, the what's the you know kind of the catalyst for celebrating the hundred years? So it, it really is a celebration of one hundred years as the submarine capital of the world. Okay, and all of the amazing things that have happened, as I said earlier, because of of this state and this town and this base and the synergy that happens between having electric boat here mm -hmm. and having the sub base here and and of itself the relationship between our community and the sub base um, I believe that our community is a stronger, better community because of our relationship with the submariners and their families. I mm -hmm. think they it adds so much to the culture that we have here. I mean, when you think about it, um, at any given time, 1% of people are in the military. Now, think of the number of people that we have here 
who are serving in the military. And it's not just, you know, the submarine, the submariners. It's also we have the Coast Guard Academy. Mm -hmm. um, you know, there are, there are other service personnel, the National Guard, for instance. But when you take that many people who are part of the fabric of our community, who are, whose, whose point of being is service to country, mm -hmm. service to others, duty and responsibility, that weaves itself into the fabric of our culture. Right. That's a lot of what this community and this area is about. Because I think you said earlier, uh, there isn't much in our community, I can't think of much that isn't touched mm -hmm. by the fact that we have a submarine base here, that we build submarines here, that we have a military community. That I, I was at Westside the day before Veterans Day, they were having a, a ceremony and um, I asked the students who, were, who had parents who were in the military to stand. Right. Uh, about half the school, maybe more, stood up. Mm -hmm. Then I asked the students whose parents either worked on the base or worked at EB to stand up. We were well over three quarters of the school by then. Right. And then I asked the students who knew, who were connected to friends or family who were in the submarine force to stand up, and every child was standing by that time. Right. This right. is a really important part of our culture, a, a really, and it's a unique story to tell mm -hmm. about um, our relationship. Right, exactly, exactly. So we wanna give, so what are the kinds of activities you're thinking about doing? So um, we kicked off with a very special kickoff event, and I think we have a couple of pictures okay. from that. Okay. On October 16th, um, several of us got to ride out on a tugboat to the USS California. Okay. And it was a symbolic reenactment of the ships coming up on October 18th of 1915. Uh -huh. So um, we rode the USS California. Um, Senator Murphy got to ride up on the sail. That was Senator Chris Murphy. That was very exciting. He was the most fortunate <laughs> one of all. But And there he is up yeah. there on the sail. But um, Senator Andrew Maynard... I'm going to try to make sure I got it. have everybody right. Senator Andrew Maynard, um, Mark Offinger, Groton Town Manager, um, Mayor John Rodolico, and myself. And I hope I haven't left anyone out. <laughs> and if I did, I hope it will come to me. We all got to um, ride in the submarine. And, you know, you talk about the unique individuals. It, it's really fascinating to see, you know, people in the control room and the way they work. What a, a, what a highly trained group of people uh, in, a, in a magnificent technological setting. Right. So exactly. we, uh, we rode up to the mm -hmm. river and um, we landed at the base um, for some one. <laughs> might have been a little bit harder to get off the boat than others. <laughs> that might have been me. Um, but, you know, it was the... It was the opportunity of a lifetime to Absolutely. be able to do that. Absolutely. Um, and then we had a ceremony, and um, you know, we talked about that unique relationship and the fact that we are proud to be the home of this base and the home of the submariners and their families, and that we are indeed submarine proud here. And that really is a theme of this year-long celebration, submarine proud. Okay. Um, if you go on our Facebook page, right, you'll see posts, and we encourage people to post to our Facebook page, to post, you know, what's important about their relationship with mm -hmm. the sub, with the submarine base or with the submarine force, um, and, and to put hashtag submarine proud, because we want to capture those stories. What makes us submarine proud? And get those stories on our Facebook page. So we encourage people to visit our Facebook page. You'll find. Um, pieces of submarine history there, particularly oh, yeah. as it relates to our base. You'll find fabulous photography of the submarines. I don't know about you, but I never, ever, mm -hmm. ever get tired of being down by the Thames River and seeing a submarine come in. Absolutely. And it can catch you unawares when you're at Paul's Pasta or Puffins or eating any place along Thames Street or down at Eastern Point Beach. And it's, it's a thrilling thing to see and to know that they're coming home. That's well, the best part. I, my mother, uh, in her latter part of her life, was at um, the Odd Fellows, the Fairview uh, nursing home, and they have this incredible view of Absolutely. the river. Absolutely. And what a thrill it was for her, uh, nine, almost 99 when she passed, to uh, look from the windows of the dining room to see the submarines come through the river and, you know, go to the base. And it was a 
a, a huge thrill. And I'm, I'm sure she was not the only resident that was like, you know, she couldn't stand up, but boy, oh boy, she was standing straight and looking, and, and that it was a great thrill, absolutely. And you, you just never get tired of it. And, no. you know, um, while we had a, I should say, when I say we, it really was the Navy, had a Meet Your Navy Day on October 9th, I believe. And as we were there, and it was on the grounds of the um, Historic Ship Nautilus and Submarine Force Museum, um, a, a submarine came in. <laughs> and it was so wonderful to see the submarine come in behind the Nautilus. Right. You know, and, um, and I was talking to Captain Lottie's wife, Lisa, and she was telling me about what it means to hear the horns mm. and know that the ship is coming in mm. and to know that your loved one is soon going to be off that ship right. and you're going to meet them. And it was such an emotional revelation um, that it, uh, that too will always uh, be a part of the thrill of seeing the submarines come up the river. Absolutely, absolutely. And I'm sure like the school system is directly impacted by the fact you have you know, all these children there. Who's, Absolutely. His mom, you know, his fathers, mostly fathers, uh, go away on, uh, and they're gone, you know, six months. They don't hear from them. Uh, you know, who knows? I'm sure in, in their heart of hearts, they might be a little nervous, a little anxious, you know, not because, you know, accidents happen. You know, it's, a, it's tough for a kid. And yet, um, you know, they're all in the same school system. And I think that's good because they can, I would think, support each other. In, in, you know, better than even sometimes a parent is having a peer who's in the same, same situation as you are. And, and that family is such a support to the submariner who, who is being deployed, mm -hmm. you know, to know that people at home are safe. And I think that's part of our responsibility as, our, as a community is to support those military families. Right. Um, whether they are the submariners or the, the National Guard, you know, being able to support those families is really very important um, to our community. I think it makes us a better community. Absolutely. Um, I was at uh, Charles Barnum School last year, which is an elementary school that's located near the base. And um, it was for a Veterans Day ceremony. And some of the students read about their parents and the pride they have and, and the sadness that they have when their parents go away, mm -hmm. but the happiness when their parents come home and how proud they are. Right. That's, that's really an amazing thing to hear and to think about. Uh, and, it, and it becomes a, a less and less a part of the American norm because so much fewer people have served in the military and have any concept about, you know, what it's like to have a, 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 a spouse, a parent, um, a way like that, whether it be in the Navy or the Army or the Air Force or whatever. So I think that um, Groton becomes um, kind of unique. And, and unique in, in a sense that in the South, I think there's more of this general um, patriotism. It's much more evident, let's put it that way. You know, you're talking about Yankee Connecticut. Um, and yet, you know, we are... Submarine sure, proud. Exactly, <laughs> exactly. So, the, you know, that's kind of a, a dif uh, kind of different because, you know, we're here in New, New England and we don't have... It's not like having a big, sprawling marine base, but... Um, the people who are here in town, they sure know that the fact that the submarines are here. Every freaking business in town knows that the submarine base is here. Um, so, and it, and it, I'm sure the teachers and the people around um, the sports teams and things like that recognize that you know these are you know not just regular kids. These kids have a certain kind of special burden that many many others don't have and will never have. You know, you know, I was in Colorado recently and I saw an advertisement on TV and it was close to Veterans Day and they were um, saying that once people come home um, from serving and they take off their uniform that people don't know who they are. So they were encouraging people to do a visible sign so that at least the veterans would know um, that they are supported. And I had to think that, you know, we do know who our veterans are and we know who our active military people are because um, they are in uniform so mm -hmm. often because we do see them because they are our neighbors because we know how many people even retire from service right. and come here that we are so fortunate to be able to understand the personal sacrifice that's involved in serving this country. Right. We do know who they are. Mm -hmm. And that's really an important understanding. Yeah, I, I think that becomes part of this unique structure that we have here. 
Um, and we have lots of things. I'm sure the schools are completely aware of, of the special strains that their kids have that you know other kids are not going to have. Um, and I think that um, most of the, I guess, most of the military themselves live in Groton. It isn't like they live in a lot of Groton, other places. Groton, Ledyard. Ledyard has a, a large population, which is why Connecticut Submarine Century is really not just about Groton. Okay. It's about our region. Well, first of all, it's Connecticut Submarine Century. It was named that by Governor Malloy. Okay. Because he... Un because it's not just Groton's history. We may be uh, the center, yes. <laughs> but it's not just Groton's history, it's Connecticut's history. Connecticut is very supportive of the submarine base, um, but it's all of us in this region. Um, and, and so all of us come together. And in fact, at the ceremony, uh, there is a picture of, of me speaking on behalf of the Connecticut Submarine Century Executive Committee, or okay. in Navy speak, CT Subsen XCOM. Um, <laughs> But, but all of the other community leaders are there, mm -hmm. from school districts, from mayors, from, from other town officials. They're all there because all of us support this submarine base and all of us work together as part of this celebration. And, and you know, the celebration really is a community effort. Okay. Um, we're really hoping that uh, community organizations, and in fact they already are, community organizations and individuals will be part of showing this submarine proud. This isn't about us necessarily hosting a lot of events, um, but it's about communities turning their events toward um, or focusing their events on this Connecticut Submarine Century year-long celebration. For instance, the Mystic Chamber is going to be honoring the submarine base mm -hmm. at their annual dinner. Oh, okay. um, the Groton Business Association's light parade is going to have Captain Lottie as the Grand Marshal mm -hmm. and have a submarine theme. Um, so organizations are looking at how they can take the events they have, and some are forming new events, Okay. Um, and really turning them toward a celebration of this unique relationship we have. And, excuse me, in fact, if he, <clears throat> Excuse me. Yes, <laughs> go ahead, go ahead, of course, of course. It is, uh, this is absolutely important. Yes, go ahead, continue. So it, it, any organization that wishes to, um, to register an event mm -hmm. can do so on our website, www.ctsubmarinecentury. Okay. Um, they can go there. They, as long as they tell us how their event um, addresses the submarine community right. or the submarine base, how it mm -hmm. includes that, then we will post it, we will promote it, and okay. it's not just us promoting it, it's the Connecticut Tourism, it's mm -hmm. the Chambers of Commerce, right. it's the Eastern Tourism District. Everyone will promote that event, so it's important to get it on there as soon as you possibly can. Right. Um, businesses can be part of this. Um, one of our restaurants here in the in the city, Buford's, has done a beautiful, you know, happy birthday to the sub base oh, window. Okay. Um, but other places are considering a product or a service that they can provide that will benefit Connecticut Submarine Century. And any proceeds that arise from those partnerships um, will actually go toward an effort to bring the sale of the USS Groton, oh. a former submarine, okay. the, the decommissioned submarine, back to Groton. Oh. So um, it'll be another mark of our submarine pride. Exactly. Exactly. How does how does that actually work? I mean, is it it is physically located somewhere else, and you want to? It's in Bremerton, Washington. Oh, the other side of the country. Um, yeah. And uh, the ship has been um, dismantled, but the sail is available. The Fairwater Plains, um, the the rudder. So it's our hope to be able to bring that back and create a permanent tribute to the men and mm. women who design, build, and serve on submarines. Wow, that's great. And but there'll be much more about oh, that to come. <laughs> okay, all right. Well, it, it kicked off in October this yep. century. So uh, what's going on in December? Do you, or, do you already know things that might be happening? Yep, I, and again, you can look for them on our, um, on our webpage, but two of them were ones I just mentioned. The Mystic Chamber's annual event will be dedicated to the submarine base. Um, and the Groton Lights Parade um, will also um, be honoring the submarine force. We will be starting a lecture series, we hope, soon. Oh. Um, there's a lot of interest in that, different series, uh, different lecture series about the submarine base and the submarine force. Um, we do have our Facebook page up and running, and we hope very soon to um, start the submarine 
the hashtag submarine proud campaign. Okay. And this, I assume, would involve uh, the school kids, that there'll be something in the schools? Absolutely. One of the things we hope to do is to, um, is we're working with the schools to allow the school children to actually interview submariners. Oh. And then ask the, the students to put together um, short videos. You know, it's mm. so easy for kids to do this right. nowadays. They right. can the you know, create video <laughs> right on their phone <laughs> based on that interview. And there's so many things that students can, so many things that students can address through these interviews. It could be a submariner's own life. It could be the family. What's it like to be the family of a submariner? It could be building submarines. It could be you know the women who worked right. in EB during World War II. Mm -hmm. You know, um, there are so many things that can be told. Even how submarines have changed over time. You know, last year we celebrated the 60th anniversary of the launching of the USS Nautilus. Well, what a change that made to submarines that first. Right. nuclear powered submarine but you know how they've changed over time uh, there are Holland Club members Holland Club members are people who have been certified for 50 years to be on submarines oh. we have Holland Club members with the US sub vets what a story they have to tell mm. so we're hoping to really bring kids into an understanding um, through interviews interesting well you know this is a uh, public access TV station so that actually if you had compiled a bunch of these videos we, we could have a show on it. What a great idea. You know, we could have, you know, just a bunch of segments. And we, we have had video on before, not only photographs have we used. So, yeah, if you're able to compile it over the next 10 months or something. Um, oh, that would be wonderful. We could, uh, we could try and put something on and maybe physically have some of these people come on. and, and Some uh, of the students, maybe. Yes, absolutely. Student and interviewee and maybe talk to them about their experience and the connection. Yeah, definitely. Oh, that would definitely. be wonderful. We would, you know, we'd love to continue to promote this because, you know, we are, we are physically located in Groton, but our, 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 our community is larger and all impacted. Like you mentioned, uh, Ledger, that's for sure one of our, one of our communities. So sure, we would, we would love to participate in this kind of stuff. And by showing their good works, absolutely, absolutely. And then they can have um, not only their little two-minute interview, but maybe even something uh, bigger to, to take home. And, and we would like to collect these uh, through our website, perhaps through the day. Uh, we are working with the day. The day is putting out a book in um, this month, mm -hmm. um, and the first and finest. It's, um, you know, you can purchase it. And right. I understand it'll be available for the holidays. Mm -hmm. um, I've ordered my two. But it is about the base. It's yes. about our first and finest submarine base right here in New London. Well, the day has done beautiful picture books. Uh, we have had some from New London itself, um, past and present. So correct. Yes. So we, we and we bought them for presents for people who you know came from. So yeah, the day has a fabulous library of uh, photographs and uh, uh, right. So they make that available. That's wonderful. Um, do you do you purchase it through you guys or do you? Purchase uh, no, you go th to the, the day. day. To the day. Um, uh, last, I think there's there might be a few more days left in which they're um, at a reduced price. Oh, okay. I don't think it's too much longer, so I would hurry to that site if people are going to do that. Mm. Um, I think it's like a fifteen dollars off, it's, which is a nice break. Yes, definitely, definitely, and they are they are beautifully done. So, yes, and they do. They have a wonderful whoever their publisher is who produces this for them. You know, they're it's really high quality. So that I recommend anything that they've been doing lately. Absolutely. And, and just as with Coast Guard Summer. Uh, pictures from the book are going to be turned into posters that we're going to put oh. in storefronts in um, in both New London and in Groton. Mm -hmm. And um, we also have banners being made, you know, the, the light pole banners being oh, yes, made yes. for um, Connecticut Submarine Century that Great. will be very much like the one that's behind me. Uh, the pop-up banner behind me. If we can take a look and see this beautiful uh, banner right here. The side here. Yeah. Uh, there we go. You know, this is the size that you would probably put on a light, a light uh, pole. A little, little bit smaller, little but, bit, yeah. but still that same idea. Right, um, right. And uh, because we want to show as a region, those will be available for any town who wishes to to purchase them, who has the ability to um, hang up banners on light poles. Mm -hmm. um, so we'll have them in Groton, and New London will have them. Um, and they're available for purchase, so every community can show their pride. And they right. say Connecticut Submarine Century, it's not town-specific. Right, right. Oh, that's, that is absolutely wonderful. And uh, do you already also have things that you're planning for January and February in the middle of the winter? 
We are working on having our calendar up and set for January, so we are going to encourage people to visit our website. We do have um, ideas of things that are being planned. Um, I mentioned the lecture series, that, mm -hmm. so there you'll see dates for lectures going on. You'll see um, th that several of the parades that happen over the course of the year will be dedicated to the submarine force. Oh. Um, so, and, and different organizations that hold events, such as what the uh, Greater Mystic Chamber is doing, is going to include um, the submariners and the submarine base in their ceremonies, um, the military appreciation breakfast that the uh, Chamber of Eastern Connecticut okay. hosted last week had a big cinnamon roll birthday cake for the 100th anniversary. Um, so I, that's what people are doing, and that's what we really want to encourage. Right. Although we will have some new events, mm -hmm. we really want to take the wealth of what we have and turn it toward you know, this right. celebration. Just kind of incorporated in. But I would imagine that it uh, also has the possibility, not in the dead of winter, but certainly in the spring and summer, of being a great tourism attraction. Yes. And, and you know, we noticed last year with Coast Guard Summer, we did have a couple of special events in Groton for Coast Guard Summer. And then we had, then we did, as I said, you know, incorporated into other events. But we had people come so they could see those exhibits. Mm -hmm. We had the Coast Guard Band play at Avery Point. Right. What a turnout and what a location. So, you know, those kinds of events do draw people and people do want to be part of those. And again, they will be promoted statewide. Right. Well, and then I would imagine the state also will be doing some tourism stuff to bring absolutely to bring people to to Groton to the, to the sub base. Um, absolutely, you know, the, I mean we have a natural museum. attraction right here with the Submarine Force Museum, right? And then people who are coming can look and see what events are going to be surrounding is, that at that time. Exactly, and I know that uh, the governor thinks of which is the right thing thinks of tourism as economic development. It certainly is. And, uh, it's, it's big a, for our area. <laughs> exactly right. So something else that would draw people here would be, uh, I'm sure, uh, the state is going to be supportive of anything like that uh, to bring people not only from other parts of Connecticut, but New York and New Jersey and you know all of our surrounding states to come on here and, and do a little kind of tourism. Yeah, and, and you know, it's really interesting to me how many organizations have stepped forward to be part of this. Um, the Mystic Seaport, um, the Mystic Aquarium, mm. the um, both chambers of commerce, the, the sports teams want to do things oh, around this. Okay. Um, you know, we have so many organizations. The Connecticut Maritime Heritage Festival is, is going to be doing things. So, you know, all of these organizations, it, you didn't have to beg anybody to be part right, of this. As exactly. soon as we said it was available, people said, I'm in. Right. You know, I right. want to be part of this. Right. They have to, you have to approve whatever it is they want to do. Is that is Well, that in terms of us promoting it, yeah. what we ask is that they send us a description of how the event mm -hmm. um, celebrates the sub base. You know, we're not looking for crass commercialism. Mm -hmm. um, we're not using for people to use this occasion to you know, benefit just themselves. T shirts, right. But we do know it's a symbiotic relationship when, it, when we can help promote their event. Right. When it honors, you know, the, the, the celebration. So right. as long as we have that connection, we do have a gatekeeper. And again, it's through the, the, um, the website. We'll promote it. Mm hmm. Now, the people who have organized that, yourself included, is part of some kind of executive committee. Is that how it was, how it was formed? Yes, CT Subsen XCOM. <laughs> <laughs> Which means? But we're working with Quinn and Harry. Uh, Quinn and Harry is a firm from New London that mm -hmm. does um, promotion and oh, communications okay. and outreach. So we're working with them. Um, they're designing our banners. They designed mm, this. They beautiful. designed our logo. Right. They're working with us on our social media campaigns. They're the ones who host the website and put up the events. But it's volunteers who are putting mm. these, uh, who are doing the work. Uh, the Groton Business Association volunteered to be the gatekeeper for the events. Oh, the, um, okay. the 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 cha the Mystic Chamber and the. Eastern Connecticut Chamber are working together to work with businesses. Um, Frank Lowe of the Ledyard Lions is working with the civic organizations. Wendy Berry from the Southeastern Cultural Coalition is working with museums and art galleries. I mean, we really have Betty Ann writers working with libraries. So we really have tried to reach out right. to all the different facets of our community. 
That is, that's, and do you have a, is it actually a committee, a standing committee? You we have a standing right. committee, um, and, but you can contact us most easily through the website. Mm -hmm. um, and we do have subcommittee chairs for each kind of event, as I mentioned, libraries, museums, all of those things. Um, and they will help you to uh, turn your event, to make your event uh, the best it can be in terms of part of this effort and get it promoted for you. It, 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 how did it just actually become something that you guys wanted to do? Did somebody sort of wake up one day and say, oh, 100 years, maybe, maybe this, I mean, how, how did it actually just Well, get kudos started? to New London and, okay. their, and Connecticut's uh, Coast Guard Summer. Um, they were, the, again, that was named by the governor for the 225th anniversary. Um, that's where the Coast Guard Academy is, and they brought together an executive committee made up of schools and different mm -hmm. organizations. Um, and that was where we learned that we had this, um, this anniversary coming up. By the way, the Coast Guard is also involved in this, okay. um, uh, just as the Navy was involved in the Coast sure. Guard celebration. Um, so, you know, they, they, it was, you know, this isn't the only anniversary we have coming up. Look what we have coming up with the sub base. And it was like, oh, everybody right away wanted okay. to get on it. Yes. Um, the, uh, the submarine base, um, Chris Zenden, the public affairs officer, invited a group of, of people, stakeholders, to just kind of tell us what the anniversary was, what the milestones were. But from there, it was a group of us who said, well, we need to put together a community organizing events. So that has come strictly out of the community. Wow. Um, it was not a request from the Navy. Uh, uh, they, yes. they let us know what the milestone was, but right. it's, it's purely... Um, a community-based um, effort, okay, and not not a navy-based. It's a, it surrounds the navy base, but it's right. a community-based effort. Right, it's a community reaction to kind of thanking the navy yes. for being here, and yes. for all the things that they have contributed to the community, exactly, including lots of wonderful jobs and and yes, <laughs> yes, and of course, you know, military service itself is it's. As I, we were talking before, it's not something that everybody knows anymore. Uh, fewer and fewer of our people actually ever serve in the military. So it's, um, you know, it's uh, thanking them for, for literally sac potentially sacrificing their lives to, ser to serve their country. So, uh, and there's not a lot, there's not... There's not millions and millions of people doing that anymore. So yes, absolutely, we want to be grateful. And I'm not sure how many people know how many volunteers from that sub base work in our community, mm -hmm. either while they're stationed here for sub school, when their when their ship is in port. Mm -hmm. You know, they are they're out there. You know, you go to a, a little league baseball game, and you're going to see Navy parents working there. When you go to any any one of the events that we have in the city, almost always there are Navy volunteers there. When the sub when the sub vets put together their um, observances of, you know, Veterans Day or Memorial Day, sub-schools there. They really are big volunteers in our area. Right, right. As so, is the Coast Guard Academy, <laughs> I must yes, add. <laughs> yes, yes, because we don't want to leave them out. They're Absolutely an important not. part of the, uh, of the picture as well. Um, it's... Um, do you just just made the announcement and then everybody sort of showed up? Is that well? That as I said, we were first invo invited by um, by this, the base um, to an informational meeting. Uh, from there, a group of us, um, I guess it was the, uh, uh, myself, Mark Offinger, Rita Schmidt, John Rodolico, um stayed afterwards, stood around in a circle and said, okay, who should we invite to an executive committee? The executive committee has grown. And then beyond the executive committee, we have stakeholders. We've had a stakeholders meeting and we send out information to stakeholders so right. that, and in the context that they can have through the committee so that all of the community can be involved. I mean, we can't have all the community around the table at XCOM, right. but through our committee chairs, we can touch into all facets of right. the organization. Because the idea is to have everybody in Southeast Connecticut and Western Rhode Island all engaged in some way, at least if nothing else is participant, to be part of this kind of these exactly. kind of events. Because it is, listen, I live in Westerly, Rhode Island. There are people whose livelihood depends on that sub base in, in Westerly and beyond. And in, EB. Yes. 
<laughs> exactly. So of course we're all we're all a part of the community. Correct. Um, and you know, and it, and it's imp I think it's also very important, as I say, you know, kind of like a, I'm not beating a dead horse, is the fact that we need to recognize uh, in Connecticut the fact that of these military families out there and the sacrifices that mm -hmm. they're making yep. for us to keep us safe. Absolutely. And I think we lose. I kind of we don't we don't think about it. And in fact, Yankee, Connecticut is the home for this stuff. Rhode Island also is the home for for the for the Navy, and it it's it's it is part of our our uh, our, our our own heritage is is around this, and it's and it's actually hard to believe that the submarines have been around for a hundred years. So you know there's that kind of thing that's going on, and so that the relationship has been here for such a long time, um, and you know so many people have been involved in it. So I think it's. It's really important because I think it's an opportunity to bring home again this message about how much military families are sacrificing for us. Absolutely. And I mean, if you're a Groton teacher, you probably see it. Um, if you're a Groton librarian, you might you might see it. If you're you know in the Boy Scouts or the Girl Scouts, you might see it. But a lot of this is sort of people just aren't aware because they don't. They think of a military base. They think of something big and gigantic, you know, uh, sprawling over you know acres and acres. They don't think. Wait a minute. You know, we have a navy base right here. <laughs> and we do <laughs> exactly, exactly. Just the way that people um, don't always think that the Coast Guard is here, uh, and forget that the academy is right there. And it's not just the academy with the Coast Guard. I mean, there's there Coast Guard stations. You know, it's uh, you know, it's uh, yes, we we are. And and I don't want to forget the Connecticut National Guard either. I mean, mm -hmm. how many people, how many of us drive past the Groton to London Airport and really realize that that's a very important unit that's stationed there? Right. So I think that's you know that is it's very important. I think there's lots of great messages that can come out of this 100 years. Um, a history that people may, if you weren't in the submarines, you may not remember. So it's important for us to kind of get back to that. And I think over and over again is this uh, enormous sacrifice that people make. Uh, you know, kids don't ask to have parents who are in the, who are in the Navy, but it, it just happens. And so it's, uh, it's wonderful. And, and, and again, repeat what's happening in the next couple of weeks in December. Okay, in December we have the Mystic Chamber event. We have the um, we have the Groton Lights Parade and look for announcements about hashtag Submarine Proud. We would like you to visit our Facebook page to and what's post. the name of the page? What's the name of the it's thing? Connecticut Submarine Century. Okay, easy, <laughs> simple, simple. Visit our Facebook page post. and there's our beautiful there logo. There it is. Um, visit post why you're submarine proud and we're going to start to collect those so that we can really demonstrate how proud we are and i think we should look forward to next year collecting the uh, little videos of the kids who are interviewing absolutely and have a fabulous show about uh, what the kids learn and you know perhaps what the submariners learn from the kids yes so I want to thank you so very much for coming on the show. And I want people, you know, get out there and figure it out. There's things in December. There'll be things going on all year yeah. round. Check our, we have events posted on our website. So I want to thank Marion for coming on. It's and been a pleasure. Thank you. It's been my pleasure to have you. So this is Harriet Grayson, your host and producer of Community Culture Showcase. And don't forget, this is also the place where submarines are made and uh, where the people leave for ports who knows? We don't even know. So I thank you again for being here and look forward to more shows coming up and also to continue to talk about 100 years of submarine duty right here in Southeast Connecticut and Southern Western Rhode Island. Thank you once again.